Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. The Avs get back in the win column over the Nashville Predators in a wild 7-4 hockey game. Easy win. E- never a doubt. <laughs> uh, in the bag. Uh, maybe more importantly, I mean, I don't know. this is more of a... It's official that the Avs have clinched a playoff spot, but it's not like we didn't know they were going to make it. It is cool to see the X next to their name, though. Statistically, yeah. they made it now. Mathematically, they're in the playoffs. It was going to happen no sure. matter what. Like, <laughs> Indeed. A lot of things would have to go wrong for them <laughs> to miss. They did not miss, though. Well, that's not true. They missed some shots tonight. There were a couple of posts hit, but we'll get into all that. Let me hit the 60-second rundown before we do. You'll be shocked to know that the Avs did not play a great first period. (laughs) Uh, They gave up the first goal of the game. They do get that one back very quickly, though, only to go give up two more goals. Thankfully, the power play finally comes through tonight, gets them one back. It's only three to two after the first period. And the second period was just as wild. (laughs) Things did not slow down at all. The Avs go down 4-2. They get one another goal back on the power play thanks to a five-minute major to make it 4-3. Uh, and then they get another power play goal to make it 4-4. So three power play goals for Colorado in this one. And then a late one from Yakov Tran and a depth goal coming through to give the Avs the one-goal lead, which they would never give away from there. Absolutely excellent third period from Colorado. They dominate Nashville in it. They pick up two goals from Nathan McKinnon in the period for your 7-4 final. I didn't even cover half the stuff like Georgiev getting pulled in this game. Like, there's so much stuff how, happened. How could you cover everything that happened in one minute there's in that game? way too much stuff. Oh, it's that crazy. It's craziness. <laughs> I, I want to get your thoughts on the Avs as a whole. Like, obviously, this game, too. We've seen, and I don't think it was really a slow start from Colorado to say in this game, but we've seen them have defensive issues in the first period. Yeah. Can you live with this in the playoffs? Can the Avs say, hey, we'll, we'll outscore some of these problems? Or I'm, No, this isn't a winning formula, especially okay. in the playoffs, right? Like These type of games are few and far between where you just have boat races going on on both sides. Um, teams usually lock stuff down pretty quickly like that. So going down by a few goals in the first period, not good, especially what you're seeing from the Avalanche tonight. A lot of odd man rushes up the ice in that first period. Yeah. Not good. We'll give Kale some flowers later, but I want to talk about the defensive side of it first tonight. On the ice for three goals against at five on five. That first one especially, look, the shot off the shin's a tough look. Yeah, I get it. He's hurt. Not a whole lot he can do there. But he only ends up in that spot because he fails to clear the puck. Yep. You had talked up the Avs' ability to get the puck going the right direction a lot in this (laughs) pregame. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Where did that go tonight? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That definitely wasn't the case. And, you see what happens when they don't get the puck out quickly. Like yep. we talked about it, like the abs are successful when they're going north south in their own end. Yeah. When they try to do too many drop passes or try to be too special with the puck, yep. it usually collapses in on them. It's okay to just get it out sometimes. <laughs> I mean, like look at what you have as a forward core, right? Especially your top six. Yep. All you have to do is get that pu- that puck out, right? Yep. And let them take care of what they're supposed to do with that puck. Yep. You don't have to do anything special back there. Trust them to get you up the ice a little bit, yep, maybe, yep. you know? But, and again, I actually thought Kale was really good tonight for the most part. Some defensive issues. That's I mean, all. you can't, uh, the guy gets hit. Yeah. In the, <laughs> right. in the top of the ankle, whatever you want to say, in the foot. It looked brutal. And then basically you just have to stand out there and hope that nothing happens. And that's not the case. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, things didn't break their way yeah. on that one. We'll put it that way. Uh, you haven't been on. I'm, I haven't been on. I'm really tired of the Georgiev conversation. I am. One, because he's been pretty darn good as of late post-trade deadline, but it's a thing we've been talking about all year. But we have to talk about it again yep. it, tonight. He gives up four goals on, what was it, 14 shots or something? 16, Thir- I think it was 13, 13 shots at the time. I mean, he ended with, what, a 
point six two nine. Yeah, something awful. wrong. Six nine four. And whatever it was, not good. It's a little bit tougher tonight because I feel like three of the four goals, not really on him. But also, you just can't give up four goals on. I don't care how high danger they are. <laughs> right. Four right, goals right. on thirteen shots just isn't good enough. <laughs> It's really hard to separate it from what's happening on the defense to the goaltender as I well. I would agree. Right? Like, when the defensive core isn't playing well and the goaltender isn't playing well, it's a recipe for just disaster. Yep. And that's what you saw in the first period tonight. Um, you hope that your goaltender comes up with some big saves, and that just wasn't the case tonight either. It, well, that goaltender, at least. That, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Let's be some, uh, it, it was Georgiev. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on the penalty he ends up taking before he gets pulled is that uh, given what we've seen out of Georgiev this year, that honestly looked pretty tame. And, you know, I, I understand if you throw the puck out of play, you know, it's a you fan throw the puck over, thing. Yeah, he hit a small child in the head with the puck. Um, not good. <laughs> but are you, are you putting the blame on Georgiev for that, that he just he needs to control his emotions better? Absolutely. I mean, okay. you've let, at that point, four goals in. Yep, and then you take a stupid penalty because of your anger, right? Like, that's a selfish penalty. I know that you're very upset. I know that he's just trying to get the puck out of there, but you've got to be smarter than that at that time. That, that's when you have to uh, find your inner zen and take a breath. Georgiev has not found much inner zen this year. That's that's no. for sure. And no, no. I guess uh, really the big concern for me here is it gets out of hand a little bit too often for yeah. Georgiev where he can't dig him, dig himself out. I guess, climb himself out of the hole right. when he gets down and pucks start going in on him. It feels like if you give up two, he's going to give up a third one. Yeah. The next one always seems to come against him. And, and you're right. The defensively, certainly in that first period was just an absolute mess in yeah, front of yeah. him. It, Two of those goals are from the middle of the slot. One of them goes bar down. And it's like, what the hell is he supposed to do? But at the same coin, the other guy comes into net, and he doesn't give up a single one. No, and he saw some of those same things yeah. happening to him. I mean, that that's the difference there, right? Is like your job as a goalie is to stop some of those things, and sometimes it's going to be a, like it's not going to be in your favor, but you have to make some of those big-time saves, and especially – Early on in a game and at the end of a game, you got to make those those big saves. That's how you keep a team in it. And we're just not seeing it from Georgiev right now. We did see it for a, a good stretch. Little stretch there. Yeah, really played great in the New York game outside of the shootout where he got beat a you, couple times. Was but. it the the first or the second goal? The one that was from behind the net, which is like that's the first fluke, one. Yeah, it was the first one. Yeah, that's just a fluke goal that happens. Yeah, whatever. But it's concerning right now. Blaze concern confirmed. I am I am concerned about that, <laughs> and I know people like to say, "Yeah, it's not his fault." You know, look what had happened here on this play. Blah 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 blah. But I still go back to sometimes your goalie has to be your best player, and he has to dig you out of bad situations. Yep. When we're talking about it not being his fault, that means the puck's still winning in the net. Yeah. So, it, I'm gonna say it. I don't necessarily believe in the question that I'm about to ask you. I know what this question is already. Eight games left in the season. Yep. Is there any world where Eustace Annan is starting game one of the playoffs? I don't think so. Me either. Me either. <laughs> Do you think he sees more games, though, at the end of the season right now to give Georgiev maybe a little time to think? Let, let's I mean, let's even break it down. Let's say, who starts a net for the next game? I, it, I think they play... Is it Columbus next? I forget who they play next. I don't know. Um, I don't know who starts the next game. The Evs do have two back-to-backs left, so Yusuf will definitely yeah, yeah, get yeah, at least two sure. games. Yeah, yeah. Does he get four or five is the question. Right, right. I think after tonight, it's pretty hard not to play him again, man. I, I we'll, we'll talk about Yusuf a little bit more later, but I, you brought him in and he shuts them out for yeah. the rest of the game. Yeah. Like he's just whether you believe in Georgiev as the starter right now, this second, Eustace Anandin is playing better. Yeah, and look at what happened after he came in. It just everything just felt a lot more calm. Yep. He was on his angles, he was on his game. I didn't see that from Georgiev. It felt like he was off his angles tonight. He just didn't feel like he was part of this game. And everything switched over. Like, it was a great call from 
Bednar to yeah, put him in. No, 100%. Great pull by Bednar. Yeah. I, the penalty might have made it a little bit easy for him <laughs> to make the move. He looked but, pretty upset. Yeah. He, he was a little <laughs> frustrated on that one. But nonetheless, it, ultimately, Bednar's move, and Anna then ends up the guy who gets the win tonight. Yeah. So. How do, you, how do you explain this game if you're Jared Bednar? He makes the one great move he, you can make as a coach to swap your goalie there. Yeah. But there's no way he's going back to that locker room going, hey, you guys are really playing our systems well tonight, boys. Good well, job out there. We talked after the first period. We're like, there's no way that this keeps going on. <laughs> and then it did. And we were totally wrong because the second <laughs> period was still the same thing. Just it was a boat race on both sides. Yep. It... Uh, it's, it's wild to me that, as a coach, he's just sitting there the same as us. Like, I guess your stars are just going to have to play better tonight. <laughs> I don't know. What else are you going to do? But on that same point, I mean, was he in there trying to say, all right, let's get back into the systems. Let's do this. And the boys just said, no, we're going to keep doing we're this. We're doing craziness. what we're doing. <laughs> but, yeah. and, and for what it's worth, I do think the systems were better, at least on the ab side in the third. Oh, absolutely. Second, yeah, was nonsense. No. But the Avs got that lead, and they said, okay, let's <laughs> let's play some actual organized <laughs> hockey for a second here. <laughs> um, yeah, there's still, like, so much stuff to get through yeah. in this game. Let's, let's start with, I, look, I don't want to call it a controversy. We talked about this during the watch along a ton. Refing was kind of bad tonight. Yep. Don't but on think both it, sides. Yeah, don't think it favored anyone particularly. Two plays you look at specifically. One, the Avs get the goal to count on the power play. Miko getting cross checked in. Does Miko dive a little bit? You happy with that call, or does he think there might be some goalie interference? I mean, there? I'm happy with that call because it's sure. on the Avalanche. D- unbiased opinion, though. Well, what happened I mean, to I, the Avalanche? Are you saying that's goalie are, interference? So are you saying that he absolutely dove on that he, not, he's a big boy i don't think he completely dove i do think he helped it a little bit but let's just like rewind let's like let's not talk about this game we've seen miko in the past yeah you've seen him just totally lose edges oh fall. for sure for sure he's in front of the net he gets cross-checked in the back <laughs> does he sell it a little bit i think so okay that's fine that's what you do as a player you feel that that pressure on your back, you're going to go a little bit forward. Yep. I, th- I, I'm, I have no issue with it. Okay. I'm, if it was I'm the other way around, I'd probably have a little bit of an issue with it. But at the same time, those are the rules. For what it's worth, they did not challenge the play. So, which I think was smart. Yeah, I agree. You're you're putting yourself in a tough spot. Yeah. It's kind of the way the NHL works right now. In a one goal game, if you're not absolutely sure about the challenge put yourself on another penalty kill gets rough especially with what you're seeing going on with the refing <laughs> yep mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely a weird one uh the other main one uh, there were some other five on three makeup calls and i don't care about those ross colton gets in the head by ryan mcdonough mcdonough gets five in a game i've always been very pro punish headshots harshly yeah you think it was the appropriate punishment Probably. I mean, it was hard to see from the angles that we were looking at. We yeah. looked at some of the reviews, trying to see where that main point of contact like was. could have gotten a little it bit of chest first. could have been chest yeah. and then chin. But, I mean, I'm going to say, you know, the refs probably had a better shot of it. If it if it is head, you got you to gotta get that out of the game. Yep. Just got to I mean, he be didn't, in control. He wasn't carrying the puck. Yep. The puck was near him. Yep. There could have been a better play. I don't think it was anything that Ryan no, McDonough tried to do to try to no, maliciously for sure hurt not. him. It was just, he's a big man, and it was a bang-bang play. Colton, thankfully, okay. He did go yeah. back, get the get the concussion protocol, but returned. So, yeah. good to see there. The guy who didn't return is Chad is talking about. Sean Walker took a puck off the ribs on a shot and uh, just went right down the tunnel and never came back. That's scary. Yeah. It's, I just don't. It's never a good sign when you see a guy, something happens and he goes right down the tunnel. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's concerning. I, I don't even know what to say to that because we don't know what's happening yeah. here. Like, and we it's won't. all speculation. You'll get like, upper body day to day, and we'll, <laughs> he'll be back when he's back. Who Has knows? he been playing injured? Was it You're like right, we talked we about? Is know. it a cracked rib that yeah. he just got like hit on again? Yeah. Like, what's going on there? We don't know. Is it just purely like, let's not chance this? 
I hope I hope that's the case. Not look, nothing against Sam Malinsky, but Sean Walker has been so good on that defense oh, he's since joining nailed, this team. Like, so love the guy up back there. It'll be. It, I'll put it this way. It's a bad time for the injury bug to start hitting the Colorado Avalanche. Yep. Obviously, you have the Nachushkin thing. You have whatever this is with Walker. Not too long ago, you had LOC out for the season. Yeah. You'd love for the Avs to get a couple of guys back and stay healthy through these last eight games. Absolutely. So, hopefully, it's not too bad. Um, the thing about a, a broken rib is you can play through it. It sucks. Yeah. But theoretically, you could play through it. Yeah. If it's game... One of the conference finals, I guarantee you, he'd be playing through. And again, this is all speculation right yeah, now. Like, like it could just be a pulled muscle, right? For like sure. from twitching to try to get away from the shot, yeah. whatever it is. Like we don't, we just don't know yet. All right, you guys got us to 100 likes already. So, oh, all right. thank you for that. We got winner shots, vitamin W, Doctor Dubs, all that good stuff. We appreciate you, chat. Oh yeah. The good um, stuff. Yes, sir. Is that still the official shot of the NHL? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't used seen to be. much about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, go over if you are in one of those people that likes to follow my bets to Circus Sports. You can jump on the Circus Sports book right now at circusports.com. They don't have all the frills and all the nonsense of the other things. They just want to give you the best odds possible. So they're for the betters who really care about the odds. That's where Circus Sports is at. You can get on there. You can go bet on the Avs. You can probably follow Blaze's bets more than mine. He's the he's the OG who was really hitting all the bets on the Avs. So keep <laughs> yeah, an eye on his Twitter. For my kids' sports. Yeah, worked out pretty good. Yeah. That that Makar Norris for you. Oh man, hit big time. Uh, go do it at Circus Sports. Whatever it is you're betting on, whether it be Avs, Nuggets, Broncos, or any other team in any other league. Rapids won today too. I think actually, I I don't know anything about betting on soccer though, so don't ask me about that. That Circus Sports does though. Uh, get with Circus Sports today. Of course, if you are going out to Vegas, make sure you stay at Circa 2. You can go to CircusSports.com and use code DNVR to get 20% off your stay with Circa when you go out there. Also, download the Circus Sportsbook app at CircusSports.com. Circus Sports bets can only be made while physically located in the state of Colorado. Must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circus Sports Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER or visit problemgamblingcolorado.org. And then... I enjoy my winter shots, but sometimes I just enjoy a cool beer, too. Get yourself some Breck Broom, the official craft beer of DNVR. Had an avalanche on the watch along today. Always a, a good beer to get. Uh, go check out Breck Brew wherever you are. It's not just local here to Colorado. They're available in all 50 states. Go to breckbrew.com and find their Breck Beer Locator online to find it in a local liquor store near you. They have dozens of flavors of beer for everyone. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. So we've talked about some of the bad, some of the things that led the Avalanche to the hole that they wound up in in this game. Let's talk about some of the good now by getting into our three stars of the game. Mm. Starting off with star number three. We already talked about him a little bit. It is that guy who comes in in relief in net and shuts down the Predators. And... Like, yes, the Avs did play better defense in the third period. Yes, things settled in in front of him, but it's also a guy who made 23 saves in this game and did not give up a single goal. I mean, he looked great. I, three star. He could be anywhere along those that star lineup right up there. I You could definitely make an argument for him to be higher. I, I limit him to three stars the same way it feels like he's limited in this season. Mm. There's just not going to be enough of a track record. To where you feel like you're going to really give him a shot yeah. at the starter job or whatever you want to call it. Sure. And and look, as I believe in him as much as anyone, 10 good games is 10 good games. Yeah. It's not 100 good games. Yeah. Until he gets that break. I, look, I hope, I hope 10 games turns into 100 good games. I do too. Tonight, he certainly earned a star. He certainly played fantastically. Again... Gets the win in relief. Not a statistic that you see come in very often. <laughs> no. And he was so calm back there as well. D very stark contrast yeah. to Georgiev. Not just literally mentally calm, but when Georgiev is off, he has a tendency to struggle with his angles a yeah, little bit. his positioning is yep. just like totally off there. Eustace felt like he yep. was locked in, man. Yep. Looked really, really clean from him. Number two... 
I debated putting McCarr at number one. Um, but ultimately, the defensive stuff kept, kept him down at number two. But what really sells me on McCarr is not just the amazing offense, does awesome stuff, scores a huge goal for the Avs, but he does it on the power play. Yeah. Where the Avs were, I think they were one for their last 12. They go out and go three for six, three for seven, maybe with that third period one. They score three power play goals tonight, and it, it doesn't win them the games by itself, but it certainly kept the Avs competitive tonight. Absolutely. And that goal was something that he needed personally. Oh, yeah. And the Avs needed it. Obviously, yep. as well. And that was just a sniper of a shot. Just dude. beat him. Oh, yeah. Far corner. Yeah. And you could tell Kale was excited about it, right? Yeah. Like He was pumped. You see that? Yeah. Like, he got that little fist pump, said something to himself. That's good. It's good for his confidence. Uh, yeah. For a guy that his regular celly is a little stick raise and just like, yeah, cool. Yeah, that are just curling out of the zone. Yeah. <laughs> Usually doesn't celebrate that hard. He was feeling it on yep. that one. Sets up a couple of nice assists, too. And, and you saw... Uh, Obviously, some of this is a product of the penalty kill you're playing. There are certain systems. But the Avs were, were executing their system against Nashville, getting that seam pass through, running that tip play in front that we talked yeah. about a lot. They really like the seam pass tonight. Yeah, I, do you, how much of that is, do you think is pre-scout, and how much of that is, hey, we're just taking what they're giving us? I mean, I think once you see that it's being successful, that you're going to run it more. It. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if there was any pre-scout on there. Sure. That is something the Avs like to run. It is. <laughs> and most of the time, like we, we saw it to the point where it was like, I don't know, maybe the guy high in the slot, I think it was Druin. Yeah, it was Druin, yeah. was wide open, but they still went for that seam pass. So like if, it were, if it were up to Miko, he would take a nine iron out there instead of a <laughs> instead of a hockey stick absolutely so he's always looking for the chip shot yeah, yeah, they, yeah but they made the cross ice pass work as well too drew yeah. in the Avs first this is that five on five but sure you're still uh, the Avs look so much better when they're effectively moving that puck through the middle of the ice yeah, as opposed yeah. to nights where it's all clogged up and it feels like their passes just aren't connecting yeah so I, I mean that's how the Avs are successful right like for sure. their, their passing game their skating ability but Really, it is that movement of that puck from side to side. Yep. It, it, it's just so hard. When you get defenses moving east to west like that, stuff just gets open. Yeah, it, it's just not good. I mean, it's east to west on the defenses. It's east to west for a goaltender, too. Yeah, fair. To be able to track that puck from one side of the ice to the other, Yep, that's hard. Like, you can do it for a little bit, but eventually, eventually you're going to lose track of that puck. Yep. I just look at the, the I don't know which goal Lecky's goal is that the third goal <laughs> there Who were so many anymore. tonight I, man I, but you know that's that's a bad goal to give up from Kevin Lincoln <laughs> yeah. and, and and Lecky gets lucky fans on it whatever it goes where the goalie isn't but Lankinen is coming across. He's he's because of that movement back and forth. He's not able to track a missed puck, and it just yeah. slides right past his pad. And especially for a goaltender, right? Like when you're seeing the side to side movement like that. What you're thinking is he's going to come back across the body, right? Because yep. he's got me moving from one way to the other. So he's really trying hard for that top left corner. Stick shows that he's going top left corner. Puck has a different idea of where it's going to be going, <laughs> which is bottom right. <laughs> the best shot you can take is the one you don't even know where it's going. Yeah. So I mean, that happened twice tonight. I mean, McKinnon at wall. I mean, that one's a little bit different. Yeah. That was like a like a... <clears throat> A change up. <laughs> the, the net was so open, it just didn't matter. Yeah, on that it didn't one. matter <laughs> how fast the puck went into the net. Absolutely. But yeah, another fan shot. You are correct <laughs> on that front. And, and like, it's a fair point. The Avs didn't get great goaltending out of Georgiev tonight. It's allowed to happen to the other team, too. Yep. Lincoln and had some struggles tonight. And, and crucially, the Avs were able to take advantage of that. Yeah. After a couple of games where the puck wasn't going in the net for him, hey, Good to remember, you're a pretty good hockey team. You can yep. finish a lot of pucks. Yep. Why not put a touchdown on a team? Yep. Feels good there. <laughs> uh, so Makar, the representative of the power play, and and I don't know. The conversation around Makar is always very weird because he's on his pace for like an 80 point season, and we're like, ah, he's uh, just all right <laughs> this year. But great to see him have that superhuman ability. In yeah, the you're just seeing a little bit of regression on the defensive end, and, yeah. and it's just a, a down year, and that happens to players. Like, yeah. Are you concerned about it? Absolutely not. He's still going to meet Makar. Yep. And it, it's funny because I think you have so much trust in this team to be the best version of themselves come game one of the playoffs. Yeah. 
And when they show flashes like this, you have faith that they're going to be real tough to beat. And you've seen that, too, from Makar. Like, I was yeah. talking to somebody about this as well. Is like, even in college, throughout the regular season, yeah. he was a good player, right? Oh, like, totally. you're, you're not saying, like, oh, this, this kid's awful. But the minute that they got into the NCAA he playoffs, was a monster. he was unreal. Yep. He single-handedly willed that team to a Frozen Four appearance. <laughs> yeah, a dude just wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah. But our number one is a guy who's taken a lot of number one stars this year. <laughs> it's Nathan McKinnon. His response to not getting a point the other night is to come out and have a four-point night. Yep. And, and importantly, the balance to McCarr's uh, power play effectiveness. McKinnon goes out and produces a bunch of points at five on five. Yeah. It's what the best players in the world do. Absolutely. I, 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 there aren't enough superlatives in the book for Nathan McKinnon this year. <laughs> he's, he's up to 127 points, I think it is now. Insane. I, 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 I've been saying this for a while, but it's true now. I've genuinely never seen an Avs player have a season like this. Yep. In fact, nobody has. Nope. He's the, it's the best season in Avalanche history, and he's still got eight games left. Yep. Like, yep. 135 might be in the bag at this point. <laughs> and, well, we talked about this in the pregame, too. Is right? It's like, yes, the streak ended, the home streak ended, but that's kind of a monkey off your back. Yep. Right? Like, you don't have all that pressure. You're not thinking yep. about it. It's not in the back of your mind. It's not in the back of your coach's mind. Yep. It's not in the back of the other player's mind of, we got to get McKinnon a point. We got to do this yep. or whatever it might be that's kind of hindering you. It's all that pressure, that scare. It's gone now. And I, he goes out and goes, what is he, he had four points today? Yeah, Ridiculous. I, I, I think your point about it in his teammates' mind is a great point, too, because what's the first goal of the night? It's not Jonathan Druin gripping the stick on a great pass from McKinnon. Yep. It is it is still a great pass from McKinnon, but it's Druin easily rifling it into the top yep. of the net, and you're yep. like, okay, abs are good. Yep, game on. And then, obviously, he just keeps racking them up, whether <laughs> whether it be empty net or, or whatever. Even the ones that he fans on go in for him. When you're a good hockey player, good things happen, I guess. Oh, if you're in the but. right spot, right? I mean, <laughs> go into the net. It's true. It's huge. It's true. If he wasn't there, it doesn't happen. Yep. So. McKinnon, I don't know, man. It's it, it's ridiculous at this point. It's it's so fun to watch. Yeah, it. I don't. I don't know that we'll ever see a season like this again. Even for Nathan McKinnon, like if he goes and runs it back next year like this, <laughs> forget it, man. I'm I'm done. Like, <laughs> not that he won't be great, but another hundred and thirty something point season, yeah. forget it, dude. He's just better than everybody else. Well, and it's you know it's that whole thing that uh, steel sharpens steel, like whatever. Yep. You've got two other guys that are in the mix right now. Leading those points. Yep. You've got McDavid and Kucherov right there as well. And Mac has the answer with a four-point night. Yep. At very least, keep up with those guys. I know he's technically leading, but games played and what happens the rest of the night and all yeah. that. Not going to get into the details. Just going to say that Nathan McKinnon is no, he's dope. ridiculously yeah. good. Uh, did not make the three stars tonight, but a guy I'm curious of, of your opinion about, Miko Rantanen tonight. Because on the one hand, there were some Miko, what the hell are you doing moments. <laughs> on the other hand, he has three assists and get himself to 100 points on the season. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Like, he hits that marker. He has that effect on the game. And, yes, there is times in the game where you're like, what's going on with Miko? <laughs> but then he just go he does the things that he needs to do. And you, you have to live with this game. Yep. But are you going to take away a 100-point player no, for come some, on. some stupid little things that happen throughout a game? Like, the it, guy produces. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many hockey players wish they could be the worst version of Miko Rantanen? <laughs> like, come on, man. It's just not fair. Yeah. And, and I don't want to forget about Trennan either yeah. tonight. What ultimately scores what ends up being the game-winning goal of the night. Yes, the Av stars were fantastic tonight. They helped carry the Avs offensively, but ultimately the biggest goal of the game comes from the Avs depth. Yep. I can live with that. If you, if the Avs depth gives me one goal a game, the Avs should win almost every game, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you look at depth and then you look at the power play goals, right? Going into the into the playoffs, 
those are the two things that need to happen for the abs to be successful throughout the postseason. Yep. If those things aren't happening, it's going to be really hard to carry to the team, even with your top players, because these games, what's going to happen is the other teams are going to basically game plan to shut down those two top lines. Yep. And you need depth scoring and scoring on the power play. Two things that did both. happen tonight. Yep. Don't love the defense early, but you get away with that sometimes yeah. when the rest of your game is working. Uh, we do have Nathan McKinnon's thoughts on the game tonight mm-hmm. and uh, a little bit of that conversation of him challenging for the heart. Uh, yeah, well, we, we played a really good game against one of the best teams in the league. Uh, yeah, that's a tough team to play against. And did a great job. Talk to me a little bit about the physicality in this game. It did feel like it had a playoff intensity in that atmosphere. Yeah, a lot of penalties, uh, you know, we had the five minute, they had a few, they had a five on three, four on three. Uh, tough rhythm at the start, but we settled in. There wasn't much later. Uh, but yeah, it was a fun game for sure. The crowd was into it. It's fun to get the win. You, know, you said it's a good team. They're hard to beat. How important was it to keep it close? You know, they got the lead a couple of times there, but you guys didn't really let it get away from you. Yeah, it just felt like we just made some mistakes and they just scored, but it wasn't like we were getting outplayed. Um, it felt like. You know, we were draining it a ton early, so uh, we just had to stick with it and lock it down a little bit. I thought Juice was so good coming in like that. It's, it's really hard, uh, really hard, and can't be overlooked how good he was. Um, so he definitely calmed us down. Was there any degree of relief that uh, the streak's over? I can just, you know, sort of have my mind free and, and play without without that on your mind? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, I get asked about it a lot. I was kind of getting tired of talking about it. Um, but I get it. it. It was a cool run, a uh, very fortunate run, um, but kind of a different. Obviously, I want to produce up the team win, but uh, yeah, it just didn't happen last game. So I was due for one of those. Uh, I was getting a lot of good bounces all, all, year, all season. With the four points tonight, you regain the lead of the NHL scoring race. When the fans are chanting MVP, I know you have to appreciate that level of support. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely appreciate it. Obviously, they're biased towards me, I'm sure, but uh, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I uh, definitely appreciate it. Looking at the Nashville matchups, what felt different about tonight? Are you being prepared for everything that was coming your way? Yeah, I just think we were more prepared for their their swarming in the D zone. They they come so fast. They take heavy D. Um, we just wanted to play through that quickly, and um, if we could do that, we figured we could get some good looks. Um, you know, our pace was great tonight. Our legs were all there, so. Um, I think that was a big difference, just not being in and out of our in, our, in and out of the offensive zone so quick. We've asked you a lot about your milestones, but Miko Rantanen gets another hundred point season. What's it been like playing alongside him after another year following what he did last year? Yeah, I mean, all my success is a lot to do with him. I mean, I uh, couldn't do anything uh, without him. He's such an amazing player, and I think people are, the last couple of years are starting to really take notice of how great he is, and um, just continues to be consistent every season. You know, 40, 50 goals, 100 points, and uh, yeah, it's a treat to play. Blaze, between McKinnon there and Miko is my pick. I would say our Circle K Eaters did pretty well tonight. I, yeah, I would say so. S- seven points between the two of them. Yep. Go get yourself some Circle K delicious snacks or fill up your gas tank. As a Circle K Inner Circle member, you can use the QR code right on screen there to download the app today or go to circlek.com slash inner circle to get signed up. When you sign up, you get 25 cents off a gallon for your first five fill-ups. If you're skating as much as Nathan McKinnon, McKinnon you might need a fill-up on the gas, <laughs> to be honest. He looked a little winded by the end of this one tonight. Uh, but you can get that and amazing snack deals, including five free Polar Pops, including one right now if you text DNVR to 31310. Uh, messaging rates do apply. Go get yourself some Circle K and make sure you're part of the inner circle when you do by using that QR code on screen or go to circlek.com. Also, if you're looking to save a little bit of money, Premier Members Credit Union is the way to go. They're a credit union, not a bank, so their objective is to make you as much money as possible with dozens of different options, whether it be their new high-yield savings account or you can earn 5% APY on your first $2,000 with a reverse-tier money market. Whatever your goal is, PMCU can help. They're all about creating a better banking experience for the entire community, and they have a ton of tools to help you save smarter. When you become a PMCU member, you'll get $200 just for opening a checking account and signing up for e-statements. That's all it takes, and you'll get $200. It'll be your best money move yet. 
Head to becomepremier.com to find out more. Third period of this game uh, and the DNVR Avalanche podcast. The reason I'm not more concerned about this game was the third period. Yeah. Yes, the first two periods were fire wagon nonsense, whatever, and you made it work. But the third period, when the chips are down, the Avs showed up, they figured their shit out, and they locked it in. Yep. Did not look like a team that Nashville could compete with. And you're probably not ending up with Nashville in the first round. A lot of things would have to go the Avs way to face Nashville in the first round. But you may well end up with a team that plays a much more rigorous system than Nashville did tonight. <laughs> so you have to be ready against a Winnipeg, against a Dallas, yeah. against a Vegas. The systems need to look like the third period, not yeah. the first two. They got there. Credit to them. With the game being what it was, how much of this was the Avs flipping the switch when they decided they needed to? And how much of this was just kind of the flow of the game and the Avs taking advantage of a Nashville team that just couldn't keep up? Well, if, you, if you're if you going back to the second period, yeah. it's the flow of the game, right? Like, you, you look at it, the Avs come out early in that second period, give up that first goal. It's yep. awful, right? Yep, yep, yep. Get the goaltender, switch. Then it's all Avs from there on out. Pretty much. If you want to play that style of hockey, <laughs> they'll play that with you. You've yep. got top-end talent. It doesn't matter. In the third period, though, after they do get that lead, they lock it down. They play their system the right way. It's defensive-minded. It's awesome to watch. You're not really concerned about the chances that you're giving up to Nashville. And then who takes over? Nathan McKinnon. The best players, yeah. <laughs> Nathan McKinnon is the guy that scored in the third period. Yep. Two huge goals. I mean, like, the, the second one that he scores, whatever. First one, first security one, goal there. Security yeah. goal. Like, you love that. Yep. But you're not concerned about the process that's happening in the third period. Uh-huh. It's if you're Jared Bednard, you're a little bit more concerned of why didn't we play that style of hockey from the start of this game? Fair. Right? To yep. We waited until the third period after our chips were down for a little bit, and then we started playing this way. Yep. It, it really was, at five on five, a fairly even game throughout, to yeah. be honest. Even if it was a little higher event than most coaches would like, it's not like the Avs were really getting dominated throughout the, the game. So yeah. I do want to give them some credit for, despite falling behind two goals at times, a game where it never felt like the Avs were out of it. Unlike that Montreal game where the third period of that game, yeah. it just felt like the Avs were done. I mean, if, if you're looking at the tape, though, in that first period, you're saying, what's happening here? Why are... Why are we giving up so many like odd man on rushes ones? and yep, yeah for like, sure what what's happening there are we pinching too much like what are we doing are we trying to get ahead of this game yep like what's going on here how do we fix this lock it down a little bit better yeah. than they had um, uh, and other shout outs for this one the Avs best possession D pair of the night was Sam Gerard and Josh Manson hmm. personally from the eye test I didn't think they played that great but yeah. really. On a night where you had a lot of guys on the ice for goals against, Manson and Gerard, 2-4, none against in the goals category. Shots on goal uh, ended up being, what were they, 14-7 to seven in Josh, two, for the abs for Josh Manson. Interesting. I think it's just because that one goal stuck out so bad. Where sure. Josh Manson, Sam Gerard basically take up the yeah. same guy in the wrong spot. Just get lost a little bit there. And they get lost, yeah. and you have, I don't even remember who the goal scorer was on that goal, but sitting in the slot all by himself. Yep. Big yikes, to say the Big least. Big yikes. Uh, but it, it, it just goes to show, I think, even when you're looking at Avs players who maybe didn't play the best game, there's good things to find. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All over the ice, to be honest. I, I don't know about Miles Wood. He was pretty rough tonight, but <laughs> everybody else had good things to find. Uh, <laughs> And he had Georg- some chances. Georgiev also not a whole lot good to find. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's true. Miles Wood did generate some good chances, yeah. just didn't finish them. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think it's a, a way you would love the Avs to continue playing. No. As far as fire wagon hockey, but this time of year, everybody says wins are wins. Well, and you look at it too, like we've talked about this before in the past, is what style of hockey do you want to play? The Avs will play it. The Avs will play it. And yep. if you're going to play it better, great. You better be better, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Let's get to our super chats here, and then we'll get into some final thoughts stuff. Five dollars from Will, who says juice for starter. I think he got a step closer today. I'll say that. Absolutely. I don't think he's gonna make that step this season, but he's a step closer. Given the contract he just signed, I certainly think he's locked up at least the backup position for next year. Well, absolutely. I, I mean, if if you if this wasn't eight games before the playoffs start. Yeah. Let's say this is February. He'd, he'd have bought himself some runway for real. He would yeah. have definitely probably saw a few more games where he's starting this to be like, okay, what are we going to do here? Yep. Unfortunately, clock's running low, so yeah. probably doesn't have the time. Uh, $14 from the Incredible Drew, who says, I'm concerned with Blaze's lack of concern. Not pretty, <laughs> but it's still two points thanks to Eustace. Refs still need to be held accountable for being complete dog shit. Happy Easter all and on to the next. I, look. You you will find a person who agrees with you that the refs either need to do a better job or there at least needs to be some sort of accountability there. But the league has been this way for my entire life. So I only I only have concerns when the Avs lose. Yeah, yeah, losing is matter. a concern. It doesn't matter <laughs> the style that they lose. I'll have some concerns about that. <laughs> uh, Two dollars from Banks, who just says Blaze spelled incorrectly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, five dollars from Tyler, who just says juice. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun that the Evs might have a homegrown goalie on their hands here. Yes, it's awesome. And then five dollars from the Walrus himself, who says paying five bucks for tarps off Rudo boobs, <laughs> and to say Blaze, you better be around on the pod come playoffs. Tarps off. Yeah, the Evs did score seven. I it's true, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, we also do have for you guys uh, Bednar's presser for today. So let's uh, have a listen in on, I'm sure Bednar, not super happy with the systems for most of this game. <laughs> Coach, when uh, Georgie gave up, allowed four goals against Pittsburgh, he stuck with them. And tonight, you did make a change. I'm curious what the difference was tonight. Just gut feeling. Yeah. I, I just thought he wasn't sharp. So... Decided to make the change. He ended up getting an unsportsmanlike after shooting the puck. And was the decision made before that happened to pull him, or was that? It's part, part of it. This is the seventh straight season you guys have clinched a playoff berth. Just does that? What does that mean? Is it nice to see that hard work kind of pay off here with some games left to go? And that's the goal, right? Getting the playoffs to give yourself the chance. So. It just shows the, the dedication, the hard work that all the guys are putting into every season and trying to keep improving from the season before. And yeah, it feels good. You've talked about this team having not a confidence problem, but Nate had said that playing these types of games then before it gets tougher is a really good challenge for, for you guys. Does that help, obviously, as you get closer to the playoffs? Yeah, I think it, like you've seen teams that have to battle their way into the playoffs, down stretch runs, fighting for playoff spots, fighting for you know seeding, home ice, whatever it is. They just continue to play at a high intensity when playoffs start. So, not really worried about that with our team. Again, we've talked about trying to finish as high as we can to get home ice, and I'm not going to kill the guys to do that. You know, we'll have to be smart about it, and but. I mean, when you're playing good teams, you have no choice but to play hard and play well, otherwise you won't win. You gave Trenton the opening draw, he gets that shot off right away, ends up scoring later. Is it kind of fun to rally behind a player like that facing his former team? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they started their fourth line, so we started ours, but he had a good night again tonight. I mean, he's been really good for us, solid defensively, heavy player, great on the penalty kill, makes a huge impact on our penalty kill. And like tonight, though, he had a, he had multiple scoring chances and good ones too. And then draws the penalty, you know, going in on the breakaway, which could have even been a penalty shot, another opportunity for him. So um, I was really happy with his game tonight. Did this turn on the five minute major, or did you feel like things were going well before that? No, they were going well before that, I think. You know, that was obviously a huge moment. Like we could have had a handful of goals on that power play. I thought their goalie made some huge saves on that. Obviously, the Miko tip that hit the crossbar. If it's an inch down, it's in the net. So we got some really good looks on that power play. It was really dangerous tonight. Penalty kill was great. 
Prater and uh, Ray did a nice job getting those guys prepared. They were ready to go with the special teams and, um, you know, didn't like our first period five on five, but after that we played really well. Walker didn't come back for the third. Is there any update? Yeah, there? Not yet. Upper body injury, though. Hopefully we get good news. Is Val going to go on the trip? He's going to stay here and skate at first and then probably meet the team. You guys finished the home stand three one and one. Just kind of your overall thoughts on, on how the this thought it was good. Yeah, the, I mean the only game I didn't like was the um, uh, Montreal game. I just thought we didn't have our best stuff. We were a little bit flat at the start. Um, then we kind of got our game going in the second part of that game, but we just couldn't couldn't find, buy a goal. We weren't shooting the puck very well. A lot of missed nets, lots of blocks. Goalie made some good saves, but all in all, I liked the way we played on this home stand. Like compared to last year, you were you has displayed more instances of frustration when he was the first year starter versus now. What do you think is different in how he's processing that part? I don't of know. You have to ask him. It's a question for Gorgi. What is your confidence level in someone like Anand to use him pretty much against any opponent, neither of the teams you got? It's, to it's getting or? high. You know, he's played really well for us. So, I mean, he keeps having starts like that and playing like that. The, the confidence is growing every day. Are there decisions that need to be made before the playoffs when it comes to starting goaltending? No. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks. 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 See, chat, we weren't lying. The Avs never have an injury update. All right? <laughs> it's just the way they operate. It, pretty tame interview from Bednar there, I would say. Not that Bednar ever gets too excited. Yeah. But he looked a little tired. He did. He did. You know, we, we were talking. Game like that would tire me out as a coach, too. <laughs> so I understand where he's coming from on that. I'm pretty tired just sitting here watching it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm sure Bednar didn't love, uh, love the systems for the first two periods, but coach's job is to get you a win, and they got to win. Yep. So doesn't have to be that complicated. If you want to get a win on the floors in your house, call 1-800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Is it good or bad, Chad? I don't know. I know it's bad. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> uh, go to empiretoday.com today or call the number. Let them know DNVR sent you over there, and they'll get you $350 off when you get your new floors. They did the floors here in studio for us. You can't see them, but they're super nice, looking clean. I'm not going to lie. I'm more of a carpet guy, Blaze. You carpet or hardwood? I have all hardwood throughout my house. I, <laughs> it hurts my feet, man. I want to be comfy at home. Yeah. I know most people are hardwood or, or tile or, or not carpet people. but Carpet in the bedrooms. Okay. Well, at least there's that. At least you're not Wait, hardwood do you have, bedrooms. Do you have carpet in your bathrooms? No, I'm not a crazy person. I just like carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I like carpet, but come on. <laughs> I saw a few houses that had carpet in the bathroom. I was like, yeah, absolutely not. Okay. If you have carpet in the bathroom, call Empire today right now yeah. and get that fixed <laughs> because that's not okay. Uh, go to Empire today. They have a ton of amazing options, but the best part is they don't carry all of the low-grade stuff that you're just going to sift through and not pick anyway. They only keep the high-quality options. Go get with them. Again, empiretoday.com slash DNVR. You can even go on there and put in your measurements, and they'll project flooring onto that room so you can see what it'll look like in your house right now. You can call or go to empiretoday.com for a free in-home in -home estimate right now and let them make sure you let them know DNVR sent you for the $350 off. Then, once you got your carpet installed, install your TV and get Fubo TV. FuboTV.com slash DNVR or the QR code on screen to get 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. They have the abs, which is the best part, the easiest way to get the abs on your television right now. You don't have to mess around with uh, extra HDMI cords or trying to hook up your laptop or doing all the weird stuff. Just get Fubo TV. It'll make your life way easier. And it comes up with over 140 different channels, including moves, news, television, music, and more. They've got it all with Fubo TV, including 1,000 hours of DVR when you sign up for that Fubo Pro. Get that 15% off at FuboTV.com slash DNVR. The overtime period, I guess, of the DNVR Ooh. Avalanche podcast. Avs, at this moment, are one point behind Dallas. Dallas does play Seattle tonight. Looking ahead, Blaze, one prediction. Colorado win the Central? Yeah. They Likes also it. are one game back from They do have Dallas. a game in hand, yeah, yes. Game in hand as well. So they hold their own destiny for yeah. sure. 
do you, do I think that they actively care if they finish first or second? I don't think they do. You think so? You think they're comfortable with Winnipeg in round one? I think you have to be comfortable with whoever you're going to play in round one. It's fair. I mean, and again, like the bottom of the West, there, there's no slouches down there either. It's true. It's not an easy, like in the past, you've seen that where you're, you know, your seventh and eighth seeds down there. Just like, bums. oh, yeah. it's, it's whatever. That's not the case this year. Yep. I, I would tend to agree. Would be, I'd feel a lot more comfortable winning the Central if Vegas holds on to that third spot in the Pacific. I'd take LA over Vegas for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously. I, I, I mean, uh, actually, I don't even know. I'd take L.A. over a healthy Vegas. I'll put it that way. <laughs> if, if those dudes are actually hurt, which we know they're not. Oh, absolutely not. So, is what it is. But you get a little bit of revenge going after playing some Vegas. That is true. Yeah. Look for the revenge angle. I'm always here for that. Yeah. Uh, Colorado down the stretch here. They do have the Columbus game coming up, but that's really their last easy game. It's a lot of quality teams to end up the season, including both Winnipeg Eggs. and Dallas. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good or a bad thing that they're going up against the best down the stretch, Blaze? Especially at the very end of the stretch going into the I – like, I know people are like, oh, you want to get that rest in? And you can. Like, if things are locked up, you can rest players. There isn't anything wrong with playing heavy competition at the end of the schedule before you get into the playoff run. I think it's something okay. that needs to happen, right? Like, it gets you ready. Like, if you just go in playing teams that not aren't in the playoff run, yeah, they're not giving you their best. Coasting they're bringing up games, players from yeah. the AHL. They're trying new things out that they can do because it really doesn't matter what's, what's going on. But if you're playing against those teams that are going to be in the playoffs that might be potential matchups for you, I think it's huge. Okay. I think it's huge for the coaching, I think, and it's huge True. for the players, right? Like, from the coaching staff getting film on – what they like to do, where can we see things that we can kind of take advantage of. I think it's a it's a, a big advantage going into the playoffs like that. All right. We're counting it as a good thing. Hopefully the Avs can win a bunch of those games. Absolutely. And I guess to that fact, if you go and lose all those games, that might be something that's You might have some hurts. concerns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might have some concerns over that, for sure. <laughs> all righty. Uh I, I, I look, been a weird couple of games for Colorado. I think. Yeah. On the whole, I think they probably played a better complete game against New York. Absolutely. Just couldn't find a way to to finish and win it. Tonight, the big problem you had in your last two games was goal scoring. You put seven in the back of the net. <laughs> Were there other problems? Sure, but you're also solving problems at the same time if you're Colorado. Yeah. So, I'm I'm good here. Any uh, any final thoughts you want to add, Blaze? Man. The goaltending just needs – it can't be shaky like this going into the playoffs. That's my only concern that I have right now. Too hard to win giving up four game in the playoffs. Yeah. It's just yeah. not sustainable stuff. But for tonight, it works. We yep. are out of here for this one. We're off tomorrow, but we'll be back for the game Monday, of course. Be sure to tune in to the pregame watch along and postgame for that. And keep an eye out here on YouTube and over on the DNVR.com for all of our other postgame coverage. Megan's story. Uh, I'm actually doing the studs and duds tonight in video format. Nice. So if you want to see something a little bit different, check that out. And then, of course, my review video. So long form video. Well, it'll be two videos. <laughs> the, uh, that, the, uh, the review might be pushing 20 minutes tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. that's a lot of goals. Uh, we appreciate y'all. And we will talk to you on the next one. Like the mayor.